Deepak, I am, like everyone else, interested in life after death. Is there even remotely such a possibility? And I listen very seriously to you and your understanding of personal consciousness and the lack of, uh, of personhood. And I have to tell you that if reality were the case that my personhood would be subsumed in the ocean of cosmic consciousness, I'm not sure I would take that bargain because I don't want to be subsumed. I don't want to give up my personhood. I can explain it uh, with metaphor again, <clears throat> you know. There's a frog who lives in a well, and it's his whole world. <laughs> I think I'm the frog. <laughs> okay. And then one day, it's a toad, actually. Oh, it's and getting then worse. one day, there's a big storm, and a frog from the ocean falls into the well. Uh -huh. And the little frog wants to show off. He says, look at my world. It's from here to there, and from there to here, from there to there. And, you know, the other frog has nothing to say because he can't explain to this little frog that there's an ocean which is much bigger and the playground is much larger. Okay, so you're not subsumed in the sense of becoming an amorphous nothingness. You awaken to a wider playing field as you move in the direction of your non-local essential being. You're a non-local being having a local experience right now. And as you move in the direction of locality, so there are lots of levels of existence. You know, you have a physical body, which is totally localized, but then you have a mind, intellect, and ego. It's, I can't have a location for that. And then you have a soul and spirit, which has no location whatsoever. So the more I move into the direction of the more subtle aspects of reality, the more I expand my vista of the playing field. And it is not that I give this up, I include and transcend this at the same time. Just like when you have survival and safety, you say, oh, that's not enough, I want achievement, but you don't give up on survival and safety. When you have achievement, you say, I want love and belongingness, you don't give up on achievement either. You've included it and transcended it. You have love and belongingness, you want, say, I want uh, meaning and purpose. Yeah, you don't give up on the previous <coughs> thing, you have meaning and purpose, you say, I want to know if there's a higher consciousness. Yeah. You have that, you say, I don't want to give up on that, I want to know if there's an ultimate reality, yeah. and I want to be that. So you are in including and transcending on your evolutionary journey, and it's a very exhilarating experience. And so yeah, not giving I, up on anything. I can go for that. I mean, that, that mm -hmm. sounds very attractive. Mm -hmm. But I, I think I do have to give up something of that, that, that personal uh, sense of individuality to achieve that. Here's how I would explain it. Okay, and this is part of Vedantic experiential knowledge. It's not a philosophy. It's not... A, it's not a system of thought. It comes through through direct experience of yoga, which, by the way, yoga is the root sound of that is yuj, which is also the etymology for the English word yoke. Mm. When Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my mm. burden is light, then he's nailed to the cross for saying that. Mm. Okay, but this is the true experience. So when you have the experience of true yoga, which is union with your source, and you understand that all copper, and the Buddha, by the way, uh, stole this from the Vedantas. <laughs> he modified it as the four noble truths. Mm -hmm. But the, they say there are five reasons why human beings go through suffering. First is they don't understand reality. Okay, they confuse it with what they see and observe and touch and taste and smell. They don't understand it. Okay, so that causes the first cause of suffering. Okay, not knowing reality which is, includes themselves. They don't know who I am because I'm confusing myself with my body yeah. and my mind and my intellect and my ego and all that. The second cause of suffering is the endless search for permanence in a world that is inherently impermanent. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing that lasts even a microsecond, okay? There's no such thing as a particle, by the way. It doesn't exist. It's a frozen movement that is observed and it's called a particle. So hanging on to the idea of permanence, clutching at something that doesn't exist, it's inherently impermanent. And so both that which you clutch at and the one who's clutching are both illusions. The third is being afraid of the same impermanence, clutching but being afraid. The fourth is identifying with the personhood 
that's an illusion. <laughs> and the fifth is the fear of death. <laughs> okay? In these five causes can be summed up the entire human dilemma of suffering. Not knowing who yeah. I am is yeah. the first. And that contains all the five. So the ticket to freedom is to find out who you are. And when you find out who you are, you will see that you're a timeless being having a time-bound experience. But will I still feel like I am me <laughs> yes, when, I, when, when, I, when I merge into this consciousness? Yes, because when I, I, when I let go of I'm Robert, I'm Robert Kuhn, <laughs> I am, I let go, something yeah. remains, right? Right, right. And that's who you are. I am still uneasy. Friends of mine who are religious have this comfort. I don't have any comfort. I have this existential angst all the time. Uh, I listen to you, I, I kind of like to believe some of it, but I still have this emptiness in the pit of my stomach. Okay, let me ask you something. Most of the time, you have a thought, right? We have bundles of thought, right? Sure. And the thoughts are about the future or about the past, right? Yeah. So you're already living in a dream, you know? You're already living in a dream because everything that you perceive is filtered either through an idea about the future or the past. Every thought, you can't have a thought yeah, about yeah, yeah, what yeah, is. Yeah, okay? the pre present doesn't exist. It doesn't That's exist. Right, right. And yet it is in the present that you live out right, the dream. Right, right. And so you'll go through your entire lifetime in a waking dream. <laughs> okay? And if you can wake up from that waking dream right now and say, Robert, as you're listening to me, just turn your attention to who's listening. As you're observing me, just turn your attention to who's looking, and you make that a habit, then you'll see there's a presence there, even though you can't find it, but it's the only common factor in every other dreamlike experience. Mm -hmm. Hang on to that. That's your ticket to freedom. And if you wake up now, you'll be awake in death. <laughs>